Welcome to a new video. We're straight on to Chris's classic barn find Viva. I knew he'd be straight on it. I turned up, he's got it on the rack and he started the process of stripping it down. He may be giving me a poke here when I'm talking about what he's doing because I didn't really ask him. I kind of knew through little chats that we've been having that what, what his plans were for the engine. So he's just covering it up at the minute. I'm in the middle of doing another video and you'll probably see him whip out during my video and he's gonna give this a deep clean. This is the original engine that was in the boot of that Beaver when he bought it. And a lot of you said, it'd be nice to put matching numbers car. And Chris said that that would be really, really nice. He has got a spare engine, but he's adamant that this one's going back in. And as you can see, it is in quite poor condition. So he has started already purchasing bits. He was showing me some bits this morning. He's bought new valves for it, new guides, new head gasket kit new water pump he's bought loads and loads of parts for it brand new old stock genuine stuff he's also got various other little bits and pieces there that he started removing from it to take down and have blasted yeah some of it yeah blasted things like the carburetors and all the aluminium casings like the cam chain case in there we're going to be having them soda blasted like we did on the old range rover and getting those up to look like new again this engine, I'm sure, it's, it's going to undergo quite a large rebuild, but it's going to be as good as new when we're finished with it. But there's your little before, because Chris is just about to pull the trigger on it and turn it into another masterpiece. Let's crack on and get it done. So you would have seen Chris give it a real deep wash. First he done it with some diesel, got rid of the, most of the grime off of the engine, and then he jet washed that off and then moved on to G101 just to get all the residue of the oil off. He's removed that timing chain cover, the water pump, engine mounts. He's removed everything from the engine. But when he was removing that water pump, three of those four bolts actually snapped and two of them were flush in the in the head. So he's been sitting there with a drill, drilling them out and then tapping them out. And he's uh yeah, he's he's run the tap back down there and they're perfect now, ready to hold the new water pump. He's had the engine upside down on the rack and he just said to me, underneath that rocker cover, look how nice and clean that all is in there. It's definitely the original mileage for that car. What did it have on it? 60, 61,000 with that full history to 1999. All of the bits are off now that need to come off. So like this is gonna be going, getting blasted, and this will be repowder coated in black or painted, whatever Chris prefers to do. It'll probably go period correct with everything. All of these bits are gonna get soda blasted over where we had those other bits done, and they're gonna come up really, really nice and all look nice and new. So really moving on with it. We're going to continue on this doesn't show a great deal but i just wanted to show a little bit of before we do take these to have them blasted and cleaned we've got them in the parts washer just getting the majority of the muck off if you see here it's quite mucky we've got the brushes here and at the moment it's pouring on that side of the carburetor where that's had a little scrub and it starts to come up clean just before we take them over to have them soda blasted just get the majority of the oil and crud off of them really does make their life a lot easier and they don't want all of this in the bottom of their parts sprayed so the media blasting on it, it's not media blasting so vapour blasting they don't want all this in the bottom of their vapour blaster so just to get the worst of it off is going to cut their job in half and make a nicer job of it 
I do completely get that little bit of video there with a the parts washer. You could hardly hear me. And I was going to leave that out. And I thought, no, I'll just put it in there. I can only apologise. I didn't realise it was going to be that loud on camera. But it is the next day now. And we have just picked these up after being... Chris, I keep getting it wrong. It's not it's vapour blasting. I keep calling it soda blasting. And for those of you that follow us on Instagram, you would have just seen my sneak peek of a before and after of that carburetor. We've actually got one there, and that was before it was done. I mean, look at how that's come out. The chap has said to us now, this does need to be taken apart and rebuilt straight away just to clean up any residue that's in it. Chris has ordered a rebuild kit for it. That's arrived, so we're gonna be getting on and getting that done straight away just to get rid of all the residue that's inside that. We've got the fuel pump there. Chris has built a, bought a rebuild kit for that as well, but it hasn't arrived yet. But again, that's come out lovely. You've got the chain cover. It's just immaculate. It all looks like new stuff. This, this stuff is just how it would look coming out the factory. You've got the thermostat housing there. That didn't come up the best but it's very, very old, and that's the best that they could get it. But at least we know there's gonna be nothing falling in that water system of that car because it's all been removed. I was quite shocked at how all the brass come up as well as all the aluminium itself. It really does look like a work of art now. And moving on, we've got the inlet manifold. And again, that's come up like new. So that engine is it's gonna look incredible once it's together. Let's get on and get this carburetor rebuilt. It is a completely different day. In fact, I think this is a week later, still in the same video, because it is being done as a weekend job. And as you know, I'm not here over the weekends. I've just popped over just to do a bit of recording and catch up on this rebuild of this engine. And you can see that Chris has been very, very busy. You've got all the engine mounts there, the brackets for the alternator, all, all of the little brackets, they've all been blasted and he's got them all hanging here now, ready to paint. I'm not gonna show that because we did show it in the previous generator engine video. He's got the distributor there, that's all been stripped, a sump, uh, oil filter housing. Now there's two fans there, as you can see, two pulleys, two covers, and for you eagle-eyed people, you're gonna be saying, Rob, why is there two? It's no secret, Chris did say when we bought that car, I've got an engine for it at the yard because we didn't know they had one in the boot. So he has decided why he's doing that engine. He's actually simultaneously gonna be doing two of them. He's got two engines. One, the original one for the car, which was low compression, I believe. I may get this around the wrong way. And he's got the other one, which is high compression. And he's decided that he's gonna rebuild them both anyway. He might as well get it all done. Like when he went down to have those bits blasted, it just took two of everything and had it done. Since the day he bought that car, he has been on eBay, on the internet, searching. And Chris, these were peanuts, right? Yeah, yeah. These were next to nothing. Just these air filters, original, brand new, old stock air filters. He bought two of them. They was two pound each off the, four pound each, sorry, I beg your pardon. Water pump, he's got a brand new water pump there. And he's also bought another water pump for the other one. You've got all new seals, brand new old stock. These are all original parts. You've got the springs. He's got replacement valves, oil seals. Oh, do you know what? It's just gone out of my brain. Core plugs, new set of core plugs for it. Suspension. suspension mount. And in there, four new pistons with rings. Very, very lucky to find that. And under there, you can see he's got new engine leads. And we're going to move on just briefly to the engines. There is quite a bit of other stuff there. 
And we will get really into depth, I suppose, when we're rebuilding that engine. Yeah. We'll talk through all of those parts that he's bought because there's just boxes. I don't want to lift that up because the address is on there, but there's all timing chains and all other bits and pieces. But this is the original engine out of that car. And just through listening to Chris and picking up on him doing little bits on it, this is the low compression. It's low or standard. Standard, standard compression. Standard, yeah. And this engine is actually black. The head's black, the rocker's black, and the sump is black as well. And it's all going back to original. This high compression engine, as you can see, this is how they come out of the factory. And it's painted red. And that kind of tells them apart, yeah. right? As soon as you open the bonnet, yeah, it's high compression car or standard compression car. So he's basically simultaneously going to be rebuilding both of these engines. We have ordered another stand and it was meant to be here yesterday. And I stood up by the gate for half an hour because Chris was tracking it. And the guy said he couldn't find us. So unfortunately, that's not going to go on a stand till next week. But the plan is today, I'm here for a little while. Chris is going to whip off this head and we're going to get it on the bench. He's got all the tools ready. And we're going to turn it upside down and have a good look through it. We've already got the rocker box cover off, so really not a lot of work. Very small engine, very straightforward to work on. And once he's done this, you can imagine what it's going to look like with all those brand new old stock parts. I can't wait to see it. All of the stuff that's in the paint booth at the moment, I believe, is going to be black. Everything you can see there is going to be black. Chris, I'm not going to hang around while he paints it. He hasn't managed to move the generator yet. And yes, for those of you that was wondering what was going on, I should have said it's got wheels on the back and rubber feet on the front, but that's another story. So let's crack on and get this head removed. Chris undone all of those bolts off camera. There was no point me standing there recording him undoing the bolts, but they are all out now. He's laid them out and that head is ready to lift off. Hopefully it don't drop too much oil. It should, should be okay though. Yeah. And hopefully, Chris, all them push rods don't fall out. I think they might. Is that the go for a bigger hammer? Yeah, it's moving. Well, the back's popped on its own when you undone yeah, the bolts. It's Been on there a long time. It was a good save there with the push rods. You got one still in there. There's not really a lot for me to show here, guys. I'm going to let Chris clear all this up and come straight back. It's a little round the wrong way because I should have put this immediately after Chris did that rebuild on it, but. You saw what it looked like before he touched it, and it still looks exactly the same now. He even managed to keep any greasy handprints off of it, but that has all been rebuilt now. It's got all new gaskets, jets, diaphragm, everything is in there, and that is ready to bolt onto that engine once it's I done. I almost forgot to mention the other little basket of bits down here, because I know somebody would have commented on it. These have all been blasted. You've got the manifolds there, rocker box. Chris had both air boxes done while he was there as well. So they are in their raw state at the moment. Obviously these are gonna be done with heat proof black paint, the same as he used on the Morris. Moving on to the engine, no, we didn't actually know what the issue was with this engine. And you, some of you are probably thinking, why have you stripped it down if you didn't know what was wrong with it? Number one, we would have stripped it down regardless whether Chris had another engine and we bolted it straight in. but. He really wanted to put this engine back in and he said they're so simple we're gonna fix it regardless of what's wrong with it so it is having a refresh you know he, he's just getting down to the nitty-gritty stripping it out and most of the components on this engine are being replaced or refreshed so it is going to end up running he did do a compression test which i'm a bit gutted really because i was here and i never filmed it where he actually put the nut gun on there and he compression tested it using the nut gun, all of the cylinders, and it was it all come back fine, that yeah. did, didn't it? So once that come back fine, he was quite happy to just get involved, get that stripped down and get it refreshed. 
Moving now on to the cylinder head. We've got it on the bench, upside down. Chris just cast his eye over it and he said, yeah, that all looks great. And he just got me out a couple of tools. He's got all the valve spring holders, compressors, compressors all out ready to start removing all of the valves and the springs. And he just showed me this and he said, yeah, Rob, I said, yeah, I know, I remember. This was the old way of lapping in the valves back in the day. He's got a newer one now that you can put in the drill. Chris, can you just demo that for me? Because yeah. it is quite good. Yeah. So you stick that end in the drill hold and you only turn it one way. When you're doing it, you put it in there and you hold, hold that drill on there. And as you turn it backwards and forwards. You see, it's going backwards and forwards. No matter, he, he's turning that clockwise and that's going clockwise and anti-clockwise. That's a yeah. brilliant tool, yeah. isn't it? So that is the plan. Chris is going to carry on stripping this down and getting involved with it. And I am going to leave it there for a minute. I was going to leave it there and then I just forgot, almost forgot about the most important bit. When Chris stripped it down, he thinks he found the problem anyway. The ring gear. As soon as he took the engine out, can you, hopefully, can you see all the edge of those teeth, what the start motor has done to it? He said, and well, it's quite obvious, the start motor is going to be engaging and it's not catching because half of the teeth are missing. And he believed that that possibly is the problem. I got sick of bump starting it. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. We think that's the problem. Fingers crossed it is. It's getting fixed regardless. Guys, as you can see, he is at it again. He's up to no good at the weekends, building an engine, refurbing it. It's lovely coming over. Chris really does get a lot done at the weekend. Sorry, the midges are still flying around everywhere. Yeah, it really does get a lot done and I can't wait to see that once it's all built up and all back together. But he's already start, He's already, I think he's already got the worst of what he needs, all of the parts. He's still waiting for a couple of small little parts, but once it's all painted up, I'm sure it's going to look lovely. And I'm glad that we can take you along for the journey to see it all. It would be lovely to do a whole refurb all in one video, but as you appreciate... <laughs> It's not something that happens very quickly. Chris is doing it over the weekends, but we did want to get this one out there and just let you know that that, that project, that Vauxhall Viva, has not been left aside off. Well, as you can tell, Chris is uh, in quite a rush to get it going, I think. I don't know where he's going in it, but yeah, he really wants to get that done and get it plonked in there and get it running. So with that, there is going to be some more videos on it, but... That is going to be the end of today's video. As usual, we do hope that you enjoyed it. And I'm sure you're going to let us know in the comments section. We really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, follow us on Instagram where we put out little sneak peeks throughout the day to let you know what it is we're up to. And it gives you an idea of what there is to come. Check out the merchandise. The link is in the description. Like, subscribe and share. And we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.